It's the ACC, so if it's not Clemson, it's nobody. Welcome to the Voice of College Football in our ACC Power Rankings for Week 10. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media, subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football, and check out our ACC-related weekly live streams. Miami on Wednesday and Thursday night at 7 and 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Wednesday night at 6. It's Florida State Live. Let's get to the power rankings from the ACC, and here we go with the bottom and the Boston College Eagles. They've been in that spot most of the season, playing horribly under Jeff Halfley. However, they did show a little life, a little spark at home against Duke, losing 38-31 with a new quarterback in it, replacing the injured Phil Jerkovic. Emin Moorhead sparked the offense for 330 yards and four touchdown passes, but BC loses. They go to NC State this week a 2-7 football team, as is Virginia Tech, our number 13 team. The Hokies, my goodness, six consecutive losses. They blew a 27-16 fourth quarter lead against Georgia Tech. They turned it over three times in the fourth quarter. The first of those was with the 11-point lead, about to make it 18 points against Georgia Tech, but they fumbled and gave it up and blew the lead. This is their worst losing streak since 1987. They've lost three consecutive games by one score, the last two by one point. Two and seven for Virginia Tech as they move on and play Duke coming up this week. At number 12 in the conference is Virginia. Talk about more close losses for the bottom of the league. They lose 31-28 to a top 15 North Carolina team coming off another loss in four overtimes the week before against Miami, 14-12. We have uh, chronicled... The demise of one Brendan Armstrong throughout the season here at the Voice of College Football. Get these numbers. 31 touchdown passes in only 11 games last season for Brendan Armstrong. And, of course, he led the nation in yards per game passing this season. He's passed for less than half of that per game. And he's also thrown six touchdowns in nine games after 31 in 11 games. Virginia plays it close against North Carolina and against Miami and against just about everybody else. For the most part, so they're still fighting with Tony Elliott in his first year as head coach. Virginia's 3-6, and 1-5 and five in the ACC. They've got a date against Pitt, which uh, decided the division a few years ago, but it's an also-ran game this season. At number 11, in some ways, this is the worst team in the ACC. It's the most disappointing by far. It is the only team in the FBS to uh, not cover the spread in every game this season. It's Miami. Wow, 45-3 against their arch rivals at home. Whoo, butt kicking. Tyler Van Dyke gave it a go, got to credit him to try to fight through a shoulder injury to try to play in this one, but he clearly could not make it. Jake Garcia is not ready for prime time. They opted uh, finally for Jakari Brown, the freshman. He provides the running threat. He ran for 64 yards against FSU, but this is a program that is just in a bad place right now with Mario Cristobal in his first season. And like he says, after every press conference, after every game during the news conference, we are starting from the ground up. We are building a program. We are working. That's all I can tell you is we got a lot of work to do. And yes, they do. Miami is two and three in the conference. They go to Georgia Tech, our number 10 team in the ACC Power Rankings. Zach Pyron had his first career start in replacing Jeff Sims, and wow, he had that comeback that we talked about against Virginia Tech in leading the Yellow Jackets to a 28-27 win. He had 303 total yards, just a true freshman, and Pyron leads Georgia Tech right now. They go up against uh, Miami, and it would be a tremendous, tremendous season for Georgia Tech considering where they came from after 10 consecutive FBS losses, 13 consecutive ACC losses, they need to go 2-1 and one down the stretch to reach bowl eligibility. At number 9 in the ACC, defending champion Pitt coming off a win against Syracuse 19-9, of course led by the defense. You can see the score right there. Uh, their number one rusher and the top rusher in the conference, Israel Abanaconda, was out. Rodney Hammond filled in capably with 124 rushing yards against Syracuse. Pitt will go to Virginia this week in trying to get that sixth bowl eligibility win. At number eight in the conference, we've got a 6-3 and three Louisville team. Man, they've got four consecutive wins. They look dead in the water. 
Uh, before the winning streak, they'd lost to BC. That's unthinkable, 34-33. Malik Cunningham got hurt, but Louisville now is playing some really good football, coming off a 34-10 win against James Madison, in which Cunningham is back. He threw three touchdowns against no picks in the game. Tyon Evans has run for 106 and 126 yards the last two weeks, and of course they completely blew out uh, Wake Forest the week before. Louisville playing some good football. They've not some good victories. They are currently at 6-3. and three. And the Cardinals, next game coming up at Clemson. So if they've really improved with Clemson on a downer after uh, the letdown against Notre Dame, who knows? Maybe Louisville can pull off the upset. They are certainly on a surge under Scott Satterfield. At number 7, talk about improvement for the entire season. Duke had gone 1-9 and in the COVID season against the ACC. Then they went 0-8 in the ACC last season. Duke is a respectable football team. Get this. After their 38-31 conquest at Boston College, 6-3, 3-2 in the ACC. And their three losses are extremely respectable. They lost to Kansas, North Carolina, and Georgia Tech. Won in overtime. All three were one-score games. Riley Leonard is their number one passer and rusher at quarterback. And Duke uh, also has, with this win against BC at 6-3, first bowl appearance coming up since 2018. And again, Duke playing some good football. They got Virginia Tech, and they will be a substantial favorite in that game at home. At number six, we kind of take it up a notch because Florida State's playing some damn good football. They just annihilated Miami, and I know it's Miami, and I know that they're off the rails, but Florida State kicked them in the rear and kicked them all over the field, 45-3. to Jordan Travis, 10 of 12 for three touchdown passes in this one. Trey Benson had himself a game, 15 for 128 and two touchdowns. Two consecutive wins for the Knowles in dominant fashion after losing three consecutive tough ones against Wake, Clemson, and NC State. Florida State goes to Syracuse, and the Orange are down right now. Florida State looking for a seventh win on the season. Now to the top five in the ACC and a team that's really on the slide, that's Wake Forest. And Wake Forest, uh, for the first part of the season, just had the one loss, and that was a double overtime 51-45 loss against Clemson. So Wake looked like the second-best team of the conference, but recent losses with 11 turnovers in the past two games against Louisville and NC State as they threw three picks. And uh, Wake is now just 2-3 and three in the conference. But still, if you look at the overall resume, a top-five team in the ACC. And they could certainly prove that with a date against North Carolina on Saturday. Interesting matchup. Drake May, Sam Hartman should be a good one. Number four in the ACC is a team that has really bounced back from losing the preseason ACC Player of the Year, Devin Leary at quarterback. Took him a few weeks to work through whether it would be Jack Chambers at quarterback, the runner, but they did now find their quarterback, M.J. Morris. Six touchdowns, no picks the past two weeks in leading NC State to a comeback win, 18 down against Virginia Tech two weeks ago, and then they win this game against Wake 30-21. to The defense played well against Sam Hartman with three picks and four sacks. They only gave up 17 yards rushing to Wake, so NC State at 3-2. and two. In the conference, 7-2 overall, they've got what should be a win against BC coming up on Saturday. NC State has uh, made it through the Devin Leary injury in fine fashion as our number four team in the ACC. At number three, yes, they're on a slide. They're not playing well. They lost a pit by 10 points on the road, but got to consider some things here. The resume is still first rate. They played Clemson to the wire on the road. They beat NC State by two scores head-to-head. you got to look at the Syracuse overall resume, and they still warrant a number three ranking in the ACC right now. Not playing like it right now, but also consider starting quarterback Garrett Schrader did not lace him up against Pitt. They had the, um, the backup, Carlos Del Rio Watson. He had a rough time. I watched a lot of this game against Pitt, 8 for 23. Sean Tucker, 10 carries for 19 yards in this game. It was a rough one for the Qs, but again, the strong resume leaves them at number three in the ACC with the date coming up at the Dome against Florida State. Top two in the ACC are easy to distinguish, and the number two team, we could possibly make an argument that they are number one, but they play 
by far in the lesser of the two divisions, and the number one team has played the far tougher schedule. So North Carolina is still at number two, but red hot at 8-1 and one overall. They're a perfect 5-0 and oh in the ACC. Drake May is a Heisman candidate. He's coming off two touchdowns, no picks, 293 yards against Virginia. And uh, Josh Downs, 15 catches against the Cavaliers for a buck 66. Cedric Gray on defense, 16 tackles, two tackles for loss and a sack. Carolina is playing better defense these days, and they go up against Wake Forest this weekend, and they would have to completely collapse not to reach the ACC championship game at this point at 5-0 and in the ACC. And still on top in regards to the ACC, but no longer a solid pick to go to the college football playoff. They would need all sorts of havoc, not because they lost at Notre Dame, but because they got dominated by the Irish. That, of course, is Clemson. 8-1 overall, still perfect in the conference, but my goodness, they looked awful against the Irish. They got down 28 to nothing in this game. Dabo Sweeney tried to do the quarterback flip to provide a spark, and it backfired. DJ Oyangalele was not the reason why they were down that far. He was not playing great, but man, he didn't have a chance on most plays. 13 of 19 for 78 yards. So Dabo pulls him to try to get a spark, and Cape Klubnik instantly throws a pick that leads to a touchdown. He throws DJ back in. He throws a pick six, and it was just a meltdown of epic proportions in South Bend. But Clemson is still clearly, clearly, clearly with wins against NC State, Wake, and also against Florida State, the best team in the ACC to date. But they are vulnerable. They've got a date against South Carolina coming up at the end of the season. And of course, an ACC championship game appearance that should be an interesting one with Drake May and North Carolina. That's a look at the ACC and our power rankings. Leave your comments below if you disagree with any of this. Clemson at one, North Carolina two, Syracuse at three, although they're not playing well. NC State at four, Wake five, Florida State six, big drop off to a certain extent to Duke. Then we got Louisville, Pitt, Georgia Tech, Miami, Virginia's at 12, Virginia Tech at 13, BC at 14. Those final four are really rough and not playing good football at all. A lot of work to do with those places, especially at Miami. We will see you soon right here at the Voice of College Football. Appreciate you being here. Florida State Live, 6 o'clock Wednesday night. Miami Live twice a week on Wednesday and Thursday, 7 and 8 p.m. Eastern Time.